Pensacola, Florida is located in the southeast portion of the United States in the Florida Panhandle along the Gulf of Mexico, just 10 miles east of the Florida-Alabama state line. Considered America's first settlement, Pensacola was established by the Spanish Empire in 1559. The Spanish flag was the first flag to be flown over the city of five flags, who controlled Pensacola off and on for 239 years. The French held Pensacola for a short time between 1719 and 1722 before being regained by the Spanish. In 1763, the British took possession, dividing Florida into two parts and named Pensacola the capital of West Florida. The fourth flag was raised over Pensacola during the Civil War as one of the Confederate States of America, with the fifth flag being the old stars and stripes after Florida became the 27th state in 1845 and again at the conclusion of the Civil War. Pensacola is also known as the Cradle of Naval Aviation. Naval Air Station Pensacola was established at the site of the Pensacola Naval Shipyard in 1913. For nearly 100 years, just about anyone who has served in any aviation capacity in the Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard received training in Pensacola. We start our Pensacola tour at the National Museum of Naval Aviation, which is located on board Naval Air Station Pensacola and is a major attraction in Northwest Florida. Starting in 1963 with only eight aircraft, the museum has grown to over 150 aircraft on display, both indoors and out, on their 37-acre lot. From the IMAX theater to the various cockpits and flight simulators throughout the museum, the experience will be as close as you can get to the real thing. When visiting the museum, make sure you have plenty of time. You can easily spend hours enjoying the museum's 300,000 square feet of displays and activities, including 50 aircraft on the museum's flight line tour. From World War I to the present, mostly every Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard aircraft, including some used by our allies, and even a couple used by enemy forces, are all on display throughout the museum. Enjoy the museum's extensive collection of naval aviation art. Walk around the Blue Angel Atrium, where you can see four suspended A-4 Skyhawks used by the Blues just before converting to the current F-18 Hornets. From a Japanese Zero to the early helicopters, airships, a Soviet MiG-15 fighter, and even a Mercury and Apollo space capsule. The optical landing system used to guide naval aviators down to the perfect three-wire to the mechanics of the steam catapult. Sit in a radio room, or take a peek into flight deck control, or transport yourself back to 1942 during World War II in the Pacific, or on the home front. You can continue your tour from the second deck overlooking the extensive array of aircraft and military artifacts, or head on down to the main deck and get a closer look. Visit the QB Bar Cafe, which is decorated by many of the squadron plaques that cover the walls of the Officers Club at Naval Air Station QB Point in the Philippines before the base was closed in 1992. Head out the back door of the main building and see the AD-3 Sky Warrior on the way to Hangar 1, which houses many modern naval aircraft, Vietnam Air aircraft, Coast Guard aircraft, and much, much more. While at the museum, there are narrated indoor and flight line tours available. During the Blue Angels flight demonstration season, there are opportunities to watch them practice from the flight line and get their autographs after the air show inside the museum. Check the Naval Aviation Museum's website link on the Pensacola page at myguidetoamerica.com for more information.
Located just 500 yards to the west of the Naval Aviation Museum is the Pensacola Lighthouse. Built just prior to the Civil War in the late 1850s, the lighthouse is still used today as an active maritime navigational beacon. Recently opened to the public, the lighthouse and the fully restored lightkeeper's quarters provide an excellent place to visit, explore, and learn about the importance these towering beacons of light have provided for well over 150 years. Before GPS and other electronic navigation devices, lighthouses were used and continue to assist ships navigating along the coast and through channels and to identify nearby hazards. Lighthouses have been credited with saving many lives and ships and continue to be used today by ships and boats of every size. Automated in 1965, the Pensacola Lighthouse Beacon is maintained by the United States Coast Guard. Listed in the National Register of Historic Places, the Pensacola Lighthouse Museum is administered by the Pensacola Lighthouse Association, who is responsible for the beautifully restored lightkeeper's quarters, supporting structures, and various public tours. Sit on the veranda and enjoy the gentle breeze while viewing the Gulf of Mexico, including the transiting ships and pleasure craft into and out of Pensacola Bay. Climb the 177 steps for a spectacular view from this 159 foot tower. During the Blue Angel practice season, there are a very limited number of spots to watch the Blues from the best vantage point on the base. Check the Pensacola Lighthouse website link on our Pensacola page for more information. Constructed on the site of Numa's Fort no longer standing, current day Fort Brancas was built on the natural 60-foot bluff strategically located to protect Pensacola Bay from maritime invaders. The current fortifications seen today at the Fort Brancas site are actually two different forts. The white structure at the base of the bluff was constructed by the Spanish in 1787. This newly constructed water battery was called Battery de San Antonio. The lower white water battery and the wooden Fort Barrancas saw action during the War of 1812 in the Battle of Pensacola when American troops, commanded by then-General Andrew Jackson, attacked the Spanish-held fort, eventually falling into the hands of the Americans in 1819. Twenty years after taking possession of Pensacola and the fort, the Americans built the current red brick structure above the lower white fort, interconnecting them and calling it Fort Barrancas. The fort was taken by Confederate troops in 1861 and used to attack Union-held Fort Pickens directly across the bay. Confederate forces eventually left Fort Brancas after hearing that Union troops had captured New Orleans a year later. Fort Brancas became obsolete and was used as a signal station and storage facility until the 1940s and eventually deactivated. After becoming a National Historic Landmark, the National Park Service took control of Fort Brancas, restored and opened the fort to the public in 1980. When in Pensacola, don't miss this historic site used to defend America's first settlement. In April of 2012, Pensacola opened the brand new Pensacola Bayfront Stadium, the home to the AA affiliate of the Cincinnati Reds, the Pensacola Wahoos. Take the family out to the ball game and see Major League's future stars in action. Located just three blocks from the center of Pensacola's downtown historic district, on the beautiful Pensacola Bay waterfront. There is much more to do while in Pensacola. Check back as My Guide to America returns to highlight many other Pensacola area attractions including historic downtown Pensacola, Pensacola Beach, Fort Pickens, the Gulf Breeze Zoo, and Perdido Key. Until then, don't forget to visit our website as we continue the American journey.